Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to use the centipede game to show some problems with backward induction. If you recall back to the last video, we had this really long game, but we found out that in equilibrium each player prefers defecting or ending the game over honoring or continuing. Thus, the game ends at the very first node. This is unfortunate for player 1 because he only gets 2 points, and it's also unfortunate for player 2 because she's only going to get 0, despite the fact that they could have each received a much higher payoff had they just trusted each other. Now let's get to the problems with backward induction. First, in experiments, players usually do far better than the sub-game perfect Nash equilibrium. Although the game rarely ever reaches the end, the players score far more points than the 2 for player 1 and 0 for player 2. Don't forget that our game theory tools are supposed to make us better players, but at least in this case, two irrational players do better than the supposedly super-intelligent rational players. So that's a problem. It doesn't mean that backward induction is worthless, but it does show that it isn't necessarily perfect. Now while that's annoying, it isn't nearly as problematic as the next issue. Put yourself into the game and imagine you're player two. And guess what? You're getting a chance to move. That is, player one chose to continue with his first move instead of doing the sub-game perfect equilibrium move of ending the game. How the heck are you supposed to respond to this? Now you are off what's called the equilibrium path of play, so you're allowed to believe anything that seems plausible. If you still trust backward induction, then you should choose to end the game because player one will do the exact same thing with his next move, and thus you should preempt him from doing so. But is that really sensible? If player one was following backward induction, then he would have ended the game with the first node. Well, maybe player one was drunk and he made a mistake. Thus, while his misplay was fortunate for you, you still expect him to fix his problem and sober up by the next information set, and thus you should defect. But maybe you decide to test the waters and continue the game. And guess what? He continues again. Well, now it seems less likely that player one was drunk or that he made a mistake. Maybe he's not rational at all, and that might make you want to further test the waters. And certainly by the 20th or so of your decision nodes, you can be nearly certain that player one is ignoring backward induction. And therefore, choosing to continue could increase your payoff. There's actually a specific study of this kind of play. It's called trembling hand equilibrium. However, that's not the really weird part of this. Now imagine you're player one and I'm player two. You saw my video on the centipede game, so I know you're irrational. And because I'm the one doing the teaching, you know I'm rational as well. Yet if you do the rational thing and end the game at your first opportunity, you'll get two points. But if you chose to continue, then what am I going to think? Suddenly I'm going to question your rationality. And you know what? I might just continue even if backward induction tells me to do otherwise. And if you continue again, then I'm probably going to continue again. And so forth. The crazy thing is that it is in your benefit to act irrationally. The big problem with backward induction here is that both players are better served by feigning irrationality, even though they are completely rational. Thus, it seems rational to be irrational, and that statement is highly illogical. And at present, we don't really have a good way of dealing with this problem.